Hi, this is Rebecca from Chemnitz, and I'm here today with a fun dyeing experiment. Today we are going to space dye a twisted skein of yarn with Easter egg dyeing pellets that I got from a kit like this on a post-Easter sale. Um, I, keep, I store the pellets in a nice glass tube. Um, we will probably end up using six per hundred grams of yarn. Now what I've got here is 100 grams of superwash nylon, a wool nylon blend in fingering weight. This is one of my favorite yarns to dye because it absorbs color beautifully. And I've done a lot of these space dyeing experiments with uh, wound cakes of yarn. But there's an even easier way that you can twist up yarn to get some really cool color penetration, or at least that's what I'm hoping. And that's if you twist the skein that you have into a hank. Now, I don't want the twist to be super tight, but unlike a cake of yarn where one end will all be in the center and then the other end you know, of the yarn, of, well, of the skein will be on the outside. In this twisted hank that we've got right here, we are gonna have yarn on the, these strips of yarn could be from the inner part of the skein, the outer part. We won't know until we wind it into a ball. So that's pretty fun and exciting. And plus, this will be easier for us to dry after the fact. So I am excited to see what will happen when we space dye this twisted hank of yarn with Easter egg dyeing pellets. I have added just enough water to this pot of yarn to completely submerge my twisted hank of yarn. I'll need to squeeze all the air out of it a few times. This is very, very loosely, um, loosely twisted. I mean, you saw me twist it. You could do a tighter version, but I was hoping that some of the dye will penetrate the center. Okay. There's a lot of air. It's floating a bit, but that's okay. That'll give us some white sections. We'll see. And if we don't get the effect that we like out of it this time, then I can always try this experiment again using a tighter twisted hank of yarn. Like all of my dyeing experiments, I have not done this before. Um, and so I am excited to see what we're going to get. I'm also planning on using kind of a sunset colorway. Uh, I'm going to use red, yellow, and orange pellets. So these colors, you know, aren't ones that typically break or anything like that. But I think that we will hopefully see some really, really fun um, saturation of color. I just turned the heat on fairly low and I'm going to bring this pot to a simmer. You guys, I almost forgot something really, really important. The acid source for the dyeing. Thankfully, Keith is an awesome hero and ran to the store to get me some white vinegar. So I'm going to add two tablespoons of white vinegar to this pot that is heating up and we are getting close to a simmer. So we're right on schedule. So as soon as we are simmering, I will be back and we'll add the dye. All right, guys, we are at a simmer. And since I successfully added the vinegar, we are now going to add six Easter egg dye pellets in somewhat random locations. 
I just decided to plop one onto the top. We'll see what happens. And in a minute, I think I'll pop this down a little bit first. Come on. Come on, water. Oops. All right. We are going to let this go and watch and see what happens to the color. And I wonder if these white patches will fade or if we'll end up keeping some white patches and we might get some white patches on the inside of the twists. I'm really excited to see how this turns out. Five or six minutes in, um, we aren't seeing any more drastic changes, although there is still a fair amount of red and some orange over here. So we're gonna let this keep simmering for a little bit. When I'm unsure how much color is really left in a section, I like to check with the spoon. There is definitely some color left on each side. Despite the fact that there is still some color left on the sides, we haven't really seen much change in the last five, 10 minutes or so. So I'm actually gonna turn off the heat entirely and let this cool completely in the pot until I can comfortably handle it. And then we'll take it out, rinse, wash, and let it dry. The dyeing is complete and all of the color has absorbed into the yarn. And we are now going to wash the fiber and open up our stain. Oh look, you can see that there's a lot of white in the twist. Fun. When, when you're doing, ooh, look at the spots. That's fun. Um, when you're dying with food coloring and Kool-Aid and stuff, the reds typically absorb to the, to the fibers first. Uh, and so I was expecting that there would be some white patches. Right now I've got lukewarm water and just some normal dish soap and I am going to gently wash this fiber until the water runs clear. Now I'm not sure if this water is looking a little orange because I just added orange soap or if a little bit of excess dye is coming out of the fibers, but I'm going to wash it until it runs clear and then hang this up to dry. Our yarn has dried and I have twisted it back into a hank, um, like so. And now I'm gonna open it back up and show you what the yarn looks like now that we are dry. Doo -doo -doo. Isn't that pretty? I mean, it's a space, bring the camera up. It's a space dyed yarn, but, the patches are bigger and we've got more white patches left over. So this would be either really fun to have kind of as a white and bright color, color white, or you could over dye it with some more red and get like really deep patches. Um, the yarn is super soft and I don't know, I'm kind of intrigued by this technique and I'm curious to see where else it will go. Thank you for watching this dyeing experiment with me. I am excited to go on more dyeing journeys with you in the future. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and thank you for watching my video.